Hello, this is Will from Trifo Productions with another Blender Quickie for Beginners. And in this Quickie, I'm going to show you how you can model a couch effectively in Blender and a very few, uh, probably not as severe or as extreme as it used to be modeled in Blender. And the reason why is I'll show you on later on in the video, but this technique can only be used in Blender 2.9 and above. Anything below 2.9 is not going to work as effectively. And that's because of a special, special brush set that's in Blender 2.9. And those of you who know, who are used to Blender, you know what I'm talking about. But the ones who are beginners, it'll be a special surprise for you guys. But uh, we're going to start modeling this couch. And this is like the tenth time I've had to do this tutorial. Uh, I don't know how many times <coughs> this just crashed on me. <laughs> so I'm using my laptop at this point because on my PC the. Uh, Blender's crashed, the software recording that I'm using to record is crashed, so I've just pretty much shoved that to the side, and now we're just sticking with our laptop, or my laptop, and we'll just get this done no matter what. Now we're going to first hover our mouse over here, and when it turns to crosshairs, let's drag down, and we're going to import our image of the couch. You can use any couch you want to, to use as a, as a reference. Uh, this one I just found online, so I'm going to use that as a reference. We're going to turn this section to our UV image editor, so we're going to click on this little icon. Click on UV editor. In Blender 2.8 and below, you could drag images in here, and it would accept it, but for some reason in Blender 2.8, I don't know if it's a bug or what it is, you can't do that, so we're going to go to image, and open, and we're going to, I'm going to navigate to where I've saved that image, which is, let me see, change the way this looks so I can see which one I'm picking, and here it is. Double click on that, and there that is. And we're going to click on pin to keep our image there. If you don't click on pin, sometimes when you go between editing a mesh and getting out of edit mode, it, it switches the, the uh, image to the point that the image just disappears. But when you click on pin, it actually keeps your image there no matter what you do in the user interface. So here we're going to go into our front of the graphic view by pressing 1 on our keyboard. And we're going to, let me see, go into edit mode, press tab. Yeah, my son and daughter, they're out now, so it gives me some time to actually work on this stuff. They're out with my wife, so hopefully I'll be able to get this done before they come back. And we're going to click on our move gizmo, click on that. We want to change our pivot point from the center to this edge here. So we're going to left click and drag on the X axis and pull this over here. And let's get out of edit mode again. We're going to go into our modifier with our, our mesh lift to go into our modifier tab, which is this wrench. Let's drag all this up so we can have a better view of our of our modifiers. So click on our wrench here and for modifiers from the drop down menu click on mirror and we're going to click on clipping and what clipping does is that it joins your mirrored image or your mirrored mesh and your mesh together. If you don't click on clip clipping what happens is this it's not connected. But once you clip on cl click click on clipping, that's a tongue twister, clip on clicking clip on clipping okay get out of edit mode go back into edit mode now it's stuck together which is great which is what, which is what we want so we're going to stretch this out a little bit to make this a little bit longer like this couch is actually long so we're going to make this longer let's go into our top view by pressing 7 and we're going to press Control R to go into our loop cut and once you drag your mouse around you see you'll, you'll see this um, a horizontal yellow line which is your loop cut and once that's there we're going to scroll up once on our mouse wheel to give us two loop cuts left click and then press S Y on your keyboard to drag the loop cuts up to either edge of your of your mesh right there is pretty good just eyeball it so left click on that to accept that change and we want to do the same thing to make the arm of our couch which is right here this part so we're going to press control R and once the the vertical line loop cut appears, left click once and just drag it over and left click to accept that as a permanent change. And the next thing we want to do is we want to make our our couch the uh, well, the sitting part where the cushions are going to sit, the bottom cushions and the back cushion. We want to make that uh, appear. It's going to be you know inset into the couch. But before we do that, let's kind of kind of make this a little bit shorter. Let's press one on our keyboard. 
get out of edit mode by pressing tab and SZ on the Z axis to kind of squish it a little bit more just to make it so that's not so tall because this the cushions are tall but the the base of the couch itself isn't so you want it to kind of simulate what we're seeing here and now we've got this going we've squished it to the point that it, it is a little bit long let's press one again let's let's make it a little bit shorter in terms of like the on the horizontal part of it SX kind of pull it in a little bit and that looks pretty good now let's go back into our top view and press tab on our keyboard and we're going to go into the face select because we want to push this part in so face select left click on that part pull down shift left click there also let's go into the front view by pressing one and we're going to press E extrude left click and drag it on the Z axis drag this down until it until it's like where we want it to be where this the bottom of the couch is so just pull this down a little bit more and now we've got this this little inset here now obviously we don't want these meshes to be here so we're gonna left click on that and then press delete on our keyboard delete the faces from the pop-up left click delete the faces and the same thing with this middle part left click delete faces delete faces same thing here okay now we have this space here and to take care of that we're going to fill that in by going to the edge select mode left click on that part hold on shift left click and then F to fill that in now we've got the bases of our couch but it looks really sharp on the edges we want it to kind of be more beveled like it is here and we're going to use the bevel modifier so that click on add modifier and go up to bevel click on that and it's beveled but it's beveled a little bit too much so we're going to decrease the amount of the bevel just give it a couple of clicks and that looks pretty good and to make it look even better press W on your keyboard and shade smooth and that looks much better and that actually adds this little from the faces that we uh, deleted it gives us the impression that these this is the same for the couch which actually adds more detail to it which is helpful and the next thing we're going to do is going to add the legs to the couch so we're going to go we're going to kind of hold down shift and move our middle mouse button around to get a better view of the bottom and let go of shift and just kind of pivot like that with our middle mouse button to kind of see the bottom of our mesh here go into edit mode by pressing tab we're going to go back into face select left click on that face hold on shift left click on that face E to extrude left click and then drag down left click and drag on the Z axis to give us our legs press one to see how that looks and that looks pretty good looks pretty good but let's make it look even better but remember we're just using this as a reference we're not trying to get it exactly like the couch we see in the image but just as a reference and what we're going to do is we're going to just left click on that uh, bottom of that mesh the leg and press S on our keyboard just to scale it in and do the same thing with that back leg S on our keyboard and just eyeball it to scale it in one again get out of edit mode and that looks like a pretty nice base of a couch it looks pretty good okay one again now the the next thing we're going to do is we're going to model these cushions we're not going to model the uh, cylinder cushions just the rectangular shaped ones and hopefully with this it's not going to mess up because I did this one this on on my PC for some weird reason it applied the modifiers these modifiers to the cushions which I wasn't wanting that at all so to ensure that didn't happen with what we're doing now let's press a just to clear out any kind of selection that we have in our user interface we're going to press shift a mesh and then cube and then we're going to left click on that and drag this over okay and for some reason it's still doing it here it's applying these modifiers to our cube here which is not what we want let's delete that this is the, this is what I'm saying with you, uh, three animation you get these weird results sometimes that just don't make any kind of sense let's let's start a new collection so let's left click on that press then right click 
new collection. Let's call this Cushion. And enter. Left click again, right click, new uh, collection. Let's call this Couch. And we're going to just drag all this into this collection. That way, the modifiers from this doesn't affect mod doesn't affect our cube, which would be our cushions. So let's click on cube and drag it. Hold down your left mouse button and drag it into couch. And then let's just turn this off. And then let's let's just focus on our cushion. And this thing is still these modifiers still haven't disappeared. I <laughs> don't. Let's just ignore that. Let's press Shift A again, and let's press Cube. Okay, we're going to uh, change our pivot point to the corner of our cube, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But let's go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Left click and drag up on the Z axis, so our pivot point is at the bottom. Left click and drag on our X axis, so that it's in the corner. Then go into the top view seven. And let's just make sure that our cube is in the back right hand corner. So we're going to drag it on the Y axis. And there it is. And the reason why I'm doing this is because you can maneuver the cube a lot better. Even any mesh that's shaped like this a lot better if your pivot point is in the middle. Because when it, once it's in the middle, you can scale it on the Z axis by pressing S and Z. And it scales really easily. Same thing on the X axis. That's what that makes it more convenient for you when it, in, in terms of positioning and sizing the cube better within your scene. And so we're going to scale it down so we want it to look like a cushion on we'll just model like one cushion. That way we'll just shift D or duplicate this one cushion so that it it's uh, spreads out to the back, the two back parts and the second bottom part. So SZ on the Z axis to make it flatter. Go into 7 the top view. I'm going to scale it back a little bit on the Y axis. It's SY. Okay, just eyeball it. And we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. And then W to subdivide it. From the pop-up menu, after you press W, click subdivide. And from this pop-up menu, sorry about the... Uh, screencast keys appearing over this but just press 5 in here 5 enter let's minimize that and what we're going to do now with this is we're going to add a, a subsurf modifier and once again I don't know why but let's let me just apply these let's just apply because this these modifiers are going to affect for some reason they're going to affect uh, what we're going to do with our uh, our cushion here so let's go back to let me see let's go back to our couch let's turn that on and we're going to click apply and apply again because in blender the modifiers only should affect the uh, mess that you're working on which is highlighted with the orange uh, liner on the outside so I don't know why it's trying to affect the cushion and the couch but that's just a bug I guess so now that we have our couch here and our cushion, let's see how the cushion fits on the couch. Let's go into the front view by pressing 1. We're going to put this down so it can fit on top of our, our couch. Let's drag it on the x-axis over here. And then 7 to look at it from the top view and drag it back on the y-axis by pressing left click and drag it on the y-axis. And this is where it comes in handy where you put the pivot point because now we can see that the cushion is a little bit too short for our couch so let's scale it on the y-axis so that it extends forward so S Y and just eyeball it okay and that, that works good and we're going to once we've we've had this let's add a subsurface modifier to this so add let me see subdivision surface let's scroll down and it adds it to the whole, our whole deal. Uh, actually, what's it's adding it? It actually added it to our couch and not to our cushion. I don't know why it did that. 
uh, like I said before, th these bugs that happen in Blender, I don't know about 3ds Max or Maya, but uh, that happened in Blender. It's it's something else. I because I I've done uh, I've done this tutorial before, and this didn't happen. But for some reason, it's happening. Let me try something else. Let's press have our couch highlight. Press Control A. I'm going to apply the scale to it, and then Control A again, and apply all transforms. Let's click on our cushion again. Add modifier, and let's go to subdivision surface. And once again, it just applies it to our couch base, but not the cushion. So I don't know. Let's do this so that we don't have to start this tutorial over. Let's close this out. And then we're going to delete our cushion here. This is the workaround that you have to do sometimes. This is just things you have to do in CGI animation just in general. When things like this happen, don't stop. Just keep going. And come up with as much troubleshooting techniques as you can. That's the key thing. So what we're going to do now is this. We're going to delete our cube. Our cushion. Let's delete that. Now let's not delete. Let's, let's press Control C. And then we're going to... Let me see. Pull that out. And then we're going to just save this uh, file. And save. And let's, let me just save it. Let me just save it on the desktop. That's that's fine. Create a new folder for me. That's going to be couch. And then we're going to call this couch base. Couch base. Save Blender file. And we're going to close this out. Let's highlight that again. Can press Control C to copy the cushion. Go to file new general. Let's not save that. Let's press delete on the keyboard and then control V to import that cushion. See this is what you have to do in CGI. Whenever you're working with any kind of studio, any kind of firm, it's better to just keep going than to stop and start again. That's the best the best advice I can give you at this point in time. But let's start it off with this cushion. Seven so the top go in the top view. Let's make sure our pivot point is still where it should be, which is that we've already positioned the, the couch. Uh, position it where it should be on the couch and then we've already subdivided it so let's add the subdivision surface to it subdivision surface add that to it and the next thing we want to do is let's crank that this up a little bit then we're going to press W on our keyboard and shade smooth okay that's there now we're going to press control we're going to apply this modifier because you have to apply it in order to do this next step in Blender. And in Blender 2.91, you're to apply something, a modifier, you have to click on this down arrow. In the other versions, it just it's just up front, you can see it. But in Blender 2.91 is hidden, so you have to click on the arrow and click apply. And then press Control C. The file, open recent, our couch base. Don't save this. Let's delete this delete and then press control V and that's our cushion this is what you have to do sometimes in order just to get get the results you need without having to start again seventh from the top I guess drag this over so that's our cushion this first one so we can see how we can kind of position this a little bit better Let's drag it down on the z-axis drag it down and we're going to press shift D to duplicate that and drag it over now uh, it does look a little bit short. That's why our pivot point where we placed it was important. So let's scale it on the z-axis, on the x-axis, sx, to make it a little bit longer. This also, let's drag this over on the x-axis, so sx also, and there you go. And we're going to have to, we want to put these cushions at the back of our couch also like we see in the image. We have these rectangular cushions here. Once again, we're not modeling the cylinder ones, just the rectangular ones. So we're going to press a left click on that count on that cushion. Hold down Shift, left click on this one. Shift D again. Three to go into the side view, then rotate it. Press R, hold down Control so you can rotate it in increments. I'm turning my screencast keys again. Okay. 
Is that working? Alright, that's good. Left click and drag on the Y axis. Let's drag this up also. Press 1. Now they're a little bit tall, so let's stick it on the Z axis by pressing S and Z. And once again, this is what helps when you pl place the pivot in the right place, which is in the corner. You can just scale it on the Z axis without having any issues in terms of, you know, am I scaling it right or where is it going and things like that. That would just be eliminated from your mind once you've put the pivot point in the right place. So scale it on the Z axis, left click to accept that change. Let's drag it up a little bit so it's not really intersecting into the bottom cushions all that much. Drag it over on the X axis a little bit so it can be positioned in the middle a little bit better. And now this is where the interesting part comes in, in terms of the sculpting part, in terms of making these cushions look as realistic as possible, when it comes to these little crevices and wrinkles in the material itself. We're not going to add any material to it. That's what I used to do in my older tutorials, or in, in the older ways to do, use Blender. I would actually apply a wrinkled texture onto any kind of cloth to simulate wrinkles in the cloth, but with Blender 2.9 and above, there's something called a cloth brush, which is just blows the mind what it can do. So uh, once that's been selected, once, once again, once you've added a modifier to this, make sure that you apply the subdivision modifier before you apply the uh, sculpt brush, the, the cloth brush to it, else it won't work. Let's click on Sculpt. And then we're going to scroll down. And the brush is right here. Click on that. And let's see which uh, let's see which cushion we highlighted. Which that's the bottom one. So click on sculpt again, and watch what happens. Okay, it says object has non-uniform scale, so the sculpt must may act kind of weird. And this is where we have to apply the uh, also apply the scaling so that we don't get any kind of weird results. Let's go back into layout mode, and we're going to highlight. This is already highlighted by left clicking on that. So press Control A again, and then apply the scale click on that left click on that control a again apply the scale left click control a apply scale left click control a apply scale now let's go back into sculpt mode click on that and then we have our brush you can notice that the warning didn't come back up again because we've applied the scale so now we don't have any issues left when it comes to applying this brush you can set the radius set it up kind of high we want to get as much of this as we possibly can. And let's kind of crank up the strength a little bit and watch what happens when we apply this cloth brush to these cushions. Let's make sure we, let's see which um, cushion we're working on here. Oh, the, let's work on the bottom one first. Let's go back and sculpt. And then we just left click and drag. And you can see that it, look, just look at this. This is, this is crazy. I mean, this is, this is something else. I mean, I'm just every time I use this cloth brush, I'm just kind of flabbergasted about how what it does. I mean, you could, I mean, to get this kind of result in older version of Blender, you have to go through quite a bit to get this kind of result. You know what I mean? Quite a bit. And that's something that I I kind of try to avoid by using the uh, a wrinkled texture as as a replacement for actually having the mesh itself. You know, actually sculpted to this. But this is phenomenal stuff. You can just left click and drag. And let's go to the other uh, other cushion. It looks like it's been sat in. You know what I mean? And if you want, the more detail you want in it, you have to crank up the subdivision surfaces. But the only thing with that, the higher your subdivision surfaces are, which increases the vert count, the more it's going to lag. So you want to just kind of keep it to minimum. That's why I subdivided it to five and we had our subdivision surfaces up to I guess it was up to two which kept it at I mean you get good results but it's not so much that it actually slows down your user interface let's click on this one also go to sculpting let's do the same thing let's get something else going here and it just this this sculpt brush is something else I mean I got I've got to just say congratulations to the guys at blend a great job because this is something else this helps this eliminates so much stuff you'd have to do if you do this stuff by yourself, on your own, just manually. This is just something else, but this cushion is done. Let's go up to the next cushion, the back cushions. Sculpt mold. Let's get some of some sculpting in there. I mean, look at this. I mean, look at these wrinkles. I mean, this is this is crazy. This is something else. I mean, I'm just... This, this makes you glad that you, you, you know Blender. You know what I mean? <laughs>
I mean, I, I don't know, like I said before, I don't use Maya or 3ds Max, but seeing stuff like this in Blender makes you glad that you know Blender. You know how to use Blender, you know what I mean? Let's go later again, click on that, and go to Sculpting, and then let's, let's get some wrinkles in this. And there you go. That's a couch made in Blender with details in it like it's been used. So yeah, this is Blender uh, Blender Quickie for beginners for today. And this is Tola Olabumi from Trifle Productions. And I'm glad you guys tuned in to watch this. I'm glad I'm doing it myself because I'm pretty excited about this 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 cloth brush. But yeah, hope you hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial. And I'm glad you guys tuned in. Glad you, for those of you who have subscribed. And those who will subscribe in the future, really appreciate appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys on the next one. And stay safe out there. And adios.